always said that um, when I left working full time for a corporate um, to start something myself that what I wanted was freedom and flexibility and I have that so um, on a beautiful day I can go to the beach in the afternoon and do my work in the evening instead. Episode 73, Chatting Better Gift Giving with Christine Langdon from The Good Registry, published 14th of March. A school bunking journalist turned philanthropic yogi. Today's guest has a background in both not-for-profits like the Red Cross and at corporate Z Energy doing good in various hoods. She now wishes us all to have the opportunity to live a kinder life, also the name of her blog, which is why she has started a pay-it-forward website for gifts, The Good Registry. TWICE stands for Talks with Innovators, Creatives and Enterprises and we are pleased to welcome Christine Langdon. Thank you. Hi, it's great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Hey, um, so, you know, you just talked to us a little bit about your journalism, you start off in journalism and the start of your career. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you came to be doing what you do now? What, what was it in, in kind of journalism that prompted you to take this other step? Um, I loved being a journalist and it gave me an opportunity to explore so many different opportunities and meet so many different people. But ultimately, I got to a point in journalism where I just felt like I wanted to be doing a bit more good. Um, And I left to go into communications and pretty quickly found my way into opportunities to do good work. Uh, One of my first roles was at the Red Cross as communications manager there. And I just kept on looking for opportunities where I could do work that I felt like I was contributing. Can you explain what that is? Like, could, is, is there anything that's happened in your life that you've gone that suddenly changed everything for you or is it that it just is this feeling of fitting in and, and that's the right place for you to fit? It was more of a sense of an absence of something. I um, felt like I had a job that I loved and uh, so much going on in my life that was so filled with richness and I would still get to the end of weekends feeling that sense of a lack of something. No matter how good a weekend I'd had, I'd still feel like, hmm, I don't know, it just feels a little bit empty that I spent all weekend going to the movies and going out for nice dinners and playing a round of golf or whatever I did and um, I came to the realisation that I felt like I wanted to contribute and I started off by volunteering uh, first of all with riding for disabled, uh, mucking out the horses and realised I wanted to be working with humans not horses Um, so then I volunteered with the IHC as a buddy for um, somebody my age with Down syndrome. Um, And then uh, when I became a trained yoga teacher, I started volunteering in prison, teaching yoga to the prisoners. And that was where I really started to feel the difference that I could make as a volunteer and felt like uh, I got so much more out of the volunteering than I ever got out of my day job. Mm. Do you think that that feeling of a lack Uh, is quite common and is that something that you're hoping that people who use the good registry um, will be hoping to fill you know in in uh, in using your website Um, and I guess in your answer if you could tell us a little bit about the good registry as well. Um, I can't really talk for others in terms of a lack that they might be feeling but I know that for myself I couldn't have appreciated the joy that I would get from giving or contributing until I did that Um, and when I was teaching yoga um, outside of the prison to classes that people would pay for I chose not to be paid but to ask for koha instead and people would donate money and then they would choose where that money got paid forward to and I loved that because you know at the end of the year we might give uh, a whole lot of $50 vouchers to the women's refuge and I got to feel like I had made that difference but I hadn't given money um, but I guess in a way I had because it was money that I could have earned from the yoga teaching if I'd chosen to. Mm, and but it's that, about being a conduit, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and that was exactly part of the um, genesis behind the good registry was that I found that it was easier to give um, 
by giving my time or foregoing something. Um, so if I had received money in my pay packet, I would have found it harder to take that money out of the bank and give it to a charity. But because I um, was asking people to give on my behalf to the charity, uh, I didn't I didn't make the donation, but I felt like I was, and it felt really good. So with the Good Registry, I tried to recreate the same thing, where instead of receiving a gift that I didn't want or need, I could ask somebody to give to a charity on my behalf, so I was no worse off, and I got to feel really good. Nice one. So can you tell us about how the website works, and you know, from the user perspective, what, what kind of, um, how they would go through it? Mm. We launched in November with version one of a website and the version one was set up um, as a gift registry just like a wedding registry where you can can go on set up a registry but for absolutely any kind of event Uh, so a Christmas or a birthday or a wedding anniversary or of course a wedding, a baby shower Um, and then you've got a page there which is your registry page you can share a unique URL with your friends and family and then instead of them buying you gifts that you might not want or need for the event then they can come on and they can give to your registry page and you can actually see how much has been raised as a result of you deciding not to receive gifts and other people can see how much has been raised as well so you get that sense of community and collective um, fundraising around your event and at the end of it there's that sense of excitement of seeing uh, some total that goes to the charity that you've chosen to support. So uh, it's it's different from, for example, if you had a website where you just donated directly as a gift in someone's name to a charity, so $50 in Christine's name to something or other. Uh, it's different because it's events-based. Um, and as part of that, because you wanted to, uh, that buzz that people get um, that you got yourself after the yoga teaching at the end of the year to give a, a larger amount of money and feeling like your whole community had kind of come behind for this one gift. Yeah, and it was also um, because we wanted a way for people to be able to give without asking any more of them. So um, I think that there is a lot of um, wastefulness that's caught up in gift giving because we feel the need to give gifts whether we um, know that the person is going to want or need the thing that we're buying for them. Um, And the opportunity is to take the money that would have been wasted on a gift that wasn't necessarily wanted or needed and pay that forward to a good cause instead. So it's money that was going to be spent on something being redirected to something that's really good. Can you talk a little bit about the environmental impact of unwanted gifts? Yeah, um, I've seen a lot of statistics around um, the increase in waste to landfill. Um, For example, in the week after Christmas, uh, it kind of doubles. But also, just from personal experience, uh, I um, have sat at my family Christmas and (laughs) seen all the gifts getting unwrapped and that mountain of um, paper and ribbon that kind of mounts up in the corner and then all of the boxes and packaging uh, that things come in. And then all those things were also carried home from the shops in a plastic bag probably. We've, you know, become so concerned about the plastic bags that we take our groceries home from uh, the supermarket in, but we're still carrying all of that shopping, the gifts home in plastic bags as well so I think most of us can relate to the weight the waste that they see on Christmas day alone and then multiply that across the country and then across all of the different events that we have throughout the year and we're certainly not saying that all gift giving is bad if you um, if you love giving gifts and you love receiving gifts and you're good at buying gifts or you're good at telling people what it is that you want or need then the gift giving is wonderful But where um, the gifts that are being exchanged aren't really wanted or needed, then there is a better way. Um, And, uh, yeah, we'd just rather not see all of that stuff go to landfill, not to mention the production of stuff as well. You know, a lot of the stuff that's getting produced is plastic stuff made in China, um, and there's a lot of waste in the production. Especially those joke presents as well, yeah. We kind of sit around and laugh, but then afterwards it's not funny. Yeah. What are we going to do with that? And somebody made that, and it may have been a child in China that made that, um, and then it was shipped here, and then it's going to clutter up somebody's house for a while, maybe, and then um, go into landfill. Without naming names, what is the silliest gift you've ever been given? 
ask you that. <laughs> um, I probably can't name names because I can't remember um, who they were from. But I um, went. One of the things that prompted the Good Registry was I had left working at Z and I was creating um, space for myself, writing my blog, uh, and that was about mindfulness. And one of the first things I did to create space for mindfulness was declutter my home. And uh, I, at that stage, opened the drawer that I had been dumping uh, old secret Santa type gifts into that I thought maybe I could one day just re gift to find a way to use them. And um, a couple of the things that I can remember finding in there were um, a tiny plastic toy about the size of my pinky finger, um, which was a grow your own boyfriend toy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, there was a penis measurer for some reason. Um, it was a piece of plastic in the shape of a penis with different sized holes in it. Um, <laughs> Golly. I, 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 don't, I don't know who gave it to me. I assume it was a secret <laughs> Santa. Um, I had no use for it. <laughs> this is like a particularly useless gift for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, what have been your challenges over the last, you know, few months in setting it all up? Um, was there anything that you just didn't expect at all that had come up? Um, I've been describing the last few months as my virtual MBA. Uh, the whole thing has been the steepest learning curve I've ever been through in my life. In a very, very short time frame, uh, I needed to set up a company, hadn't done that before. I needed to set up a trust, hadn't done that before. Ran a Pledge Me uh, campaign. Man, that was so much harder than I um, could ever have imagined it would be. Um, in, in what way? Just in terms of the work that went into it? Yeah, they tell you before you start a Pledge Me campaign that it's going to be hard and it's going to take relentless effort. Um, and we put in a lot of work beforehand to plan the communications and to um, go to people who we thought would support us and check that they would. Um, and we got lots of great support. And we had a roaring start on day one where all of those people um, launched in and supported us. And then we were like, OK, where, where's everyone else? Um, where's the rest of it going to come from um we'd set ourselves a pretty big target which made it harder and yeah we just had to keep working and really get outside of my comfort zone because I am not someone who likes to ask and that's probably been one of the things I've had to work on in myself um since starting the good registry is I have to ask and sometimes ask again Kiwis are terrible at that as yeah. well and it's, yeah, it's hard because you're actually asking on behalf of the environment and social good, you know, you're asking for something that's really, you know, important and great but we're still just crap at it yeah, and I keep on coming back to um, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and I one. just need to keep coaching myself um, with that. And it's been great. I've got two co-founders in the Good Registry, Sue McCabe and Tracy Bridges, and we've all been uh, good uh, at just giving each other the little nudge to keep doing the asks that feel a little bit uncomfortable. Congratulations, you're around halfway into my great chat with Christine Langdon from The Good Registry about keeping bad stuff out of landfill while getting that gift-giving buzz. My goal for this show is to be capturing and sharing stories firsthand from the people striving to make positive dents on a fast-changing society and to reveal some of their why. It's a privilege to chat with changemakers to explore some of their motivations to contributing to, to the greater good through innovation, creativity and enterprise. Thinking about Kiwis not liking to ask, uh, and I guess not liking to presume that someone's going to give them a gift and things like that. Um, I've just, you know, reading mm -hmm. about the Good Registry and thinking about Christmases, uh, th there's a funny thing where sometimes if you give, um, if you ask for something like the Good Registry, or for example, a few Christmases ago, I gave, you know, like Oxfam gift vouchers to my family, buy someone a goat and blah, blah, blah. That was, this is a few years back. Um, and I think that there is something funny around when people receive that, they feel like you're being morally superior, you know, that you are taking away the fun of Christmas and the silliness and you're making it really kind of boring and worthy. Have you encountered that kind of response at all and how have you, have you dealt with that? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
one of the reasons that we set up the Good Registry the way that we did is I have also uh, given people the Oxfam vouchers and sponsored a child for someone for a year. And when I've done that, they've looked at me kind of like, why did you give this to me? Um, and I hadn't considered the um, moral superiority. I thought I'd just misjudged that they might like something that I would like. And that was why we went for the registry model where the recipient makes the choice and lets their friends know that that's the choice um, that they've made. Uh, however, that hasn't, um, it works completely played into the other side of the problem, which is that cringe that we have around asking or speaking about gifts, actually saying, so I thought you were probably going to buy me a gift and I've set up this gift registry over here. Sure, it happens to be a charitable gift registry, but I'm coming to you to tell you that that gift that I think that you're going to buy me, I'd like you to give me this. And people just aren't mm. that comfortable doing it. And we did get a lot of feedback over Christmas that people liked the idea, but just didn't feel comfortable to set up a registry because they didn't want to have the conversation or they had the conversation with some family members and family members didn't want to give them um, that gift. Um, so we are responding to that. Uh, the registry model we think is still a great one for things like weddings um, where people are used to um, having a gift registry and, and including the details of that on an invitation but we want to make it easier for people to just do one-off gifting without it necessarily having to be a conversation but not taking the choice away from both parties. So we're going to be uh, shortly offering people charitable gift vouchers in addition to the registry model which would mean that instead of me buying you a voucher for Oxfam without checking with you first, um, I could buy you a voucher for the good registry and then you've got 50 charities to choose from in terms of how you would like to divvy up that uh, voucher so you get some say in it and you get to have some of that joy of giving it hasn't just been given to you but you also haven't forced it onto the giver. Yeah, I mean, the challenge, yeah, I guess there's two challenges there. One is around how to, yeah, get, get past that shyness around gift giving. But the other thing is how to make, you know, philanthropy or generosity cool again. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, are you a part of that? Is it already cool again? I don't think Was it's... Was it ever cool? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, what I know is that... We sometimes think that it's hard to do and part of what we were trying to solve with the Good Registry was exposing people who weren't used to finding a way to give to giving once and then going, actually that was fun and that was easy and it didn't, I didn't miss out on anything so we could start to snowball um, and create more generosity because we're bringing in um, the family and friends of people who give. So perhaps you're a regular supporter of a charity say Kibosh and you're giving all of your time to Kibosh uh, and you don't uh, feel like you have any money that you could also give so what you could do is you could give your birthday instead and then ask your friends and family to make donations on your behalf so then your friends and family who might not normally support a charity um, can go yay that actually was fun and easy and I might uh, give an event of my own to charity as well so yeah, hoping that we can create more of a culture of generosity by exposing people to how easy it can be and to how much joy we can get from giving. Mm, I hadn't thought about that aspect of it, that even if they're not, but even if friends and family aren't giving through Good Registry, it's still um, exposing them to that little buzz of, of uh, feeling good when you, when you give something. Yeah, mm. yeah. And... We just want to get people thinking differently about um, gift giving and giving to good causes. And we're really happy if because people have seen or heard something about the Good Registry, it's made them think differently and they have given some money to a charity that they otherwise wouldn't have or had a conversation with their family about gifts that they don't want or need. And that, if that doesn't come through the Good Registry, that, that's not a, that, that doesn't matter to us so long as the good's happening and we're a catalyst. So what aspects of your past kind of work or either paid or unpaid have, have you kind of brought to this um, and what things have been completely new to you? Um, the main thing 
thing from my past work that I've brought to it is really the voluntary sector stuff. Um, I, when I was working at Z Energy in the last role I had before doing this, the thing that I looked forward to the most every week was volunteering in prison. Um, and from that, I I got really clear uh, that the things that we get joy from aren't those things that we can buy with the big corporate pay packet or um, the career ladder that we can climb, um, that in giving we get that sense of connection and um, contribution and that was just what I wanted more of in my life so that was what caused me to go down this path in terms of the skills that I'm drawing on to do this it helps coming from a background in journalism and communications because we need to be able to tell stories and reach people um, and get the message out so that helps Um, and at the same time it's hard and um, we've still got a lot of work to do there to create the kind of movement that we need to create to get people thinking about gift giving before they'll use a platform like the Good Registry. What about the tech side of it? Did you have experience in that, you know, beforehand? None at all. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I uh, had been a communications consultant, which had opened up um, opportunities to work on a wide range of different projects. One of the projects I had worked on once was the development of a website, uh, but I was just writing the copy for that website. I really um, had a bit of a sense of the wider project that was going on around me, but didn't know anything about um, technology systems or processes or or how to build um, a good website. So that has all been learning on the hop, and uh, we employed a, a website development agency to build version one of the Good Registry and had to put a lot of trust into, into them. You've got two co-founders, um, you, and you said you've got a really good relationship. Has, has it been funny there being three of you ever, and has there been any kind of um, imbalances or challenges there, or has it all just been smooth sailing? It's been a godsend. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I've, I, I've reflected a couple of times that um, when I had the idea for the Good Registry, I was kind of like, oh, I, I could do this. I, I might just do this. And then um, I had conversations with uh, Tracy and Sue, who both were up for coming on board. And looking back, I don't know how I ever would have done it without them. Um, what we're going to do now is ask you a few strange random questions. Ooh, okay. Could you tell us about your first, worst and best jobs? <laughs> um, my first job, uh, if you count delivering pamphlets, was delivering pamphlets. Um, that was probably most New Zealanders' first jobs. Um, pretty hot on the heels of that. I worked at the local dairy, which I loved because I got to put my hand into the lollies um, all afternoon. <laughs> but I didn't like the bit where I had to mop the floors at the end of the day. Okay, and your worst? Worst. <sighs> It's a toss-up. I've had um, a few bad ones. Um, I heard Kate the other day talking about doing fruit picking. I also lasted a day at fruit picking and then (laughs) thought that was not worth my time. Um, And I had a job when I was living in Galaz in um, Edinburgh um, doing data entry when computers were kind of just starting to be used. So I had to take all of the... Um, hard copy and start to input it into a computer and it was in winter and I would leave my house when it was dark, get on the bus, get off the bus, go into the office when it was dark, work in a room on my own, the only person who was doing this data entry, have no one to talk to all day and then get on the bus when it was dark to go home. My goodness. I didn't, it was awful. Would you say that you really prize being in like a thriving kind of chatty work environment? I mean, you're working here at the Biz Dojo, so obviously you don't mind background noise. Yeah, I love being in the Biz Dojo. It's great to be around other really inspiring people doing interesting things. Um, And I'm also okay working on my own, but for short, um, I I need to break it up with being around people Mm. as well. 
Yeah, nice one. Yeah, definitely not day after day of working in a room on my own when nobody's interested in what I'm doing, let alone me. Mm. Are you are you an introvert or extrovert? Um, I used to think I was an extrovert, and I think that I'm now an introvert. I definitely need the time on my own to reboot. Mm. Interesting. And so you use yoga and, and other exercise for that? Yep, yoga and meditation. Mm. Yeah, and I also run, kayak, and cycle. I've um, been doing multi-sport. I did the coast to coast last year, so one of the toughest things I had to learn how to do was how to kayak, which taught me a lot about myself as well. I was going to say, wait, do you kayak in Wellington? Yeah, just in the harbour. Just in the harbour, yeah. What did it teach you about yourself? Um, about fear and um, that fear is just the stuff that I'm making up. I was so terrified of coming out of that kayak. Um, and when I came out, it was never that bad. And um, I had a fear that I would come out of the kayak during the coast to coast and that that would pretty much be the end of the race for me. Um, and then the great thing was that I actually did come out of the kayak in the race wow. and um, and it was a bit miserable because I you know came out in rapids and I got smacked into a rock and I managed to finally get myself and my kayak and my and my paddle out onto a bank and I sat there for a, a few seconds trying to choose between crying and getting going <laughs> again. <laughs> and that, sounds like start, that sounds like startup life actually. <laughs> yeah and exactly it, it is exactly I just feel like I learned so much for startup life because I went actually no I'm you know I'm crying ain't gonna get me anywhere so get back in that kayak and keep going and crossing the finish line I think felt so much more exhilarating because the worst thing that I thought that could have happened happened and um, and that's definitely been um, a lesson that keeps carrying me through that when the crappy stuff happens you just get back up and carry on and there's a massive sense of satisfaction and the accomplishment at the end means so much more because of it wise words do you mind saying you can say no if you want what is the worst thing you could imagine happening with the good registry I was actually having this conversation with Anna Gunther from Pledge Me the other day and we both were just, it was right on the tip of our tongues for both of us. We'd obviously both thought about it a lot, but if it's like, you know, you don't want to put the bad oh. juju out into the world, you don't have to say it. Um, I think it is, you know, you create something and your hopes and dreams are wrapped up in that a little bit and that nobody uses it. Um, we had a pretty good campaign leading up until Christmas to get people to start using it and I was pretty scared that we were going to come back after Christmas and all the Christmas events we're going to have finished and there was going to be nothing new on there um, that hasn't panned out we've got lots of birthdays on there especially children's birthdays and one of the things that that has helped me to see is that um, I don't need to be attached to the number of events or the amount of money that we are raising I can look at each individual event at this stage and see an eight-year-old child who has chosen to support Kids Can or Project Jonah and instead of receiving gifts for herself and um, when I start to imagine what that might mean for that child um, and the way that she might choose to see herself or, um, or live her life or what it might mean for the friends that go to her party um, I'm like yeah, it's not about the numbers it's every individual mm. story and the flow on effect from yeah. that yeah gosh aren't they amazing the young people that do that kind of stuff I think about myself at eight years old I was just like oh I want mm. this thing <laughs> yeah yeah but you also um, hear a, a lot of stories from parents about the frustration of um, the amount of stuff that children do receive for their birthdays absolutely um, just so much junk when you've got 20 kids coming to a party and you get 20 junky gifts that money might as well have gone straight to a good cause instead of um, via being um, trucked around and yeah. trucked to the op shop and then sitting there and maybe being bought maybe <laughs> yeah. not yeah yeah got yeah okay oh and your best job we didn't get to that Gotta say I love what I'm doing um, and then I would also say um, my best job was the unpaid job of volunteering, teaching yoga in prison. So inspiring, such a blessing to 
meet um, these amazing women and see their potential and feel the hope for them and feel like maybe I was just making a little difference um, in some way for some of them and it could be as simple as acknowledging one of them saying hey your yoga has really improved Um, you did really well today and I could see the you know shoulders kind of puff and and them look really happy to be acknowledged and to feel like I could make a difference just by giving someone a compliment and they probably maybe haven't had a compliment for a heck of a long time was a nice thing to be able to do. Right, another question. If there was one item and it has to be analogue, it can't be digital, that you can't live without, what would it be? Um, I'm happy that it's analogue. I would probably say my yoga mat, but I can practice yoga without a yoga mat. Um, But it's the one thing that I wouldn't want to do without in my life is the yoga practice. Um, And otherwise, maybe a pair of running shoes. Mm. So to get out there and and have a run is quite soothing for you or... Yeah, I need that, again, you know, going back to your question about whether I'm introvert or extrovert, that bit of me time, um, and I'm also a very good eater, I like to eat. <laughs> so, I guess um, food so is analogue, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, we but, can, None of us can live without food. We've never had that answer before, maybe chocolate, some people have said chocolate. <laughs> but the link to the running shoes is if, if I've done my run, then I can, um, I can eat the chocolate. Really get into it, mm. yeah. <laughs> get into your big breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is next for the Good Registry? Um, the next big thing is rolling out our voucher functionality so that it's really simple for um, people to come on and just buy a one-off voucher. And um, we really hope that that will open up an opportunity for corporates to be able to use the Good Registry as well because um, instead of giving some of the corporate gifts that they give to staff and customers, we think it would be really cool to see corporates giving um, staff and customers a charitable gift voucher instead. Did you want to use this platform to, you know, give a shout out to any organisations or people or even just bands or food or Wellingtony things that you like? Uh, a shout out to the people who have been brave enough to use the Good Registry so far um, because I get that we are asking people to do something that is different um, and and hard maybe to have a conversation about and it's kind of hard to know how good it feels until you do it and definitely the feedback that we're getting from people is that they didn't miss getting the gifts and they um, did feel really good but I know that it's quite a um, bold step for people to take when it's something that they haven't done before so definitely a shout out to them Um, a shout out to everyone who has really given us so much help to um, create and launch the good registry you know I talked a little bit about all of the gaps and skills and knowledge um, that I came to it with and I'm not even going to try and start listing uh, the people that have helped but um, so many other people in Wellington in particular who have been through the startup journey already or social enterprises um, who have been so willing to give me time um, and advice and uh, often not just once but hey that was really helpful can I come and have another coffee with you and another one and another one um, and I'm really grateful for people's willingness to, um, to support us that way um, my co-founders of course they've been amazing to Tracy and Sue so where can we find you personally and also the Good Registry online? The Good Registry first of all our website is thegoodregistry.com and nice and simple very simple you can find us on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram at The Good Registry. Um, and me personally, um, you can email Christine at thegoodregistry.com. And uh, you also mentioned I have my blog, which is mykinderlife.org. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming here today and and sharing your journey and best of luck for it going forward. And I hope that we all, um, all of the listeners and us in the pod can have the opportunity to give, give our gifts forward. 
thank you. Thanks so much for your interest and for your great questions and um, for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. And if your listeners have any questions or offers of support, I'd love to hear from them. Kia ora, it's Rebecca here, rounding out my chat with Christine Langdon of the Good Registry about giving ethically. We're here in the pod cave at the Biz Dojo co-work space in Wellington. The next guests in your ears are Lingi, Kay and Ollie, chatting about Creative HQ's Venture Up Accelerator Program for Young Entrepreneurs, which publishes at the end of the month. I want to shout out the two organisations supporting David to deliver this show. Biz Dojo are creating and facilitating communities of talented, interesting and clever humans pursuing their passions through a burgeoning network of co-work spaces across New Zealand. Their goal is to facilitate communities of people to collaborate in an inclusive, friendly and respectful environment. With flexible options for small and large teams and contract-free plans to suit any business, go develop and deliver your purpose over at bizdojo.com. I'm also grateful to Collider Wellington, which deliver a lively and diverse monthly program of largely free events. Access world-class intelligence, hang with some of the smartest people on earth and learn something new. Their goal is to help you connect with thought leaders, emerging entrepreneurs and inspirational experts and to support the growth of the greatest little city on earth, Wellington, New Zealand. For all the details, go to colliderwgtn.com. The goal of this show is supporting purpose-led people movements through talks with innovators, creatives and enterprises making positive dents on society, which neatly is the acronym for the show title, TWICE. Come for the innovation, creativity and enterprise and stay for the journeys to now and craft beer tasting and rating in long form episodes. Thank you for lending us your ears. It means a lot. I hope the conversations offer inspiration and encouragement for making your own social impact in whatever shape or form. Now, before I go into what's next for the Good Registry, did you have any questions, David? Just really enjoying sitting here, just <laughs> listening to great people having a great talk. And I'm just keeping out of the way, monitoring the audio. I was really worried about the follow-up. <laughs> I thought he had some dirt. <laughs> oh, well, of course, Twice Podcast is the all-seeing I am. Yes. <laughs> <to> everybody. <laughs> Having been a journalist myself, I yeah. know about the follow-up question. Follow-up question. question. <laughs>